Hi class, today's video is on profit maximization or monopolies. So the question that we're thinking about is how will a monopoly go about making as much profit as they can possibly get? The graph that I've got on the board behind me represents such a firm. So let's take a look. Right, so straight away we can see that there's a downward slope in demand curve. That demand curve represents the overall market because with monopoly, that firm is the only one in the market. So, of course, they're facing everybody in the market. So, you've got that huge um, overall market demand curve that is the firm specific demand curve. And then, furthermore, we have a downward sloping marginal revenue curve. Right? The reason why we have this is because, in order for the monopolist to sell more of their product, they have to drop the price on all the units that they sell, meaning the marginal revenue is always lower than price. Right? And then the last two curves that I have here are this marginal cost and u shaped average total cost curve. Nothing special about those. All right, so given a setup like this, it's very likely that you'll be asked, how is a firm that's operating as a monopolist going to maximize their profit? The first step is to figure out what quantity is best for them. What's the profit maximizing quantity for this firm? Right, so here you're going to use the same rule of thumb that you apply for perfect competition and monopolistic competition. Anywhere you can, you want to use this rule. It's that you want to produce where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Our handy rule. So we want to find that particular quantity on our graph. Right? There's only one quantity where that relationship is, uh, is valid. So looking at the curves that I've got here, of course I want marginal cost and marginal revenue. They come together right at this spot right here. So what that means is that it's this quantity right over there. Right underneath that intersection, let's call that Q star. That represents the highest possible profit that this firm can possibly get. So that's the amount of the good that they're going to produce. The next step is to figure out what price the firm is going to charge. And so here, the logic is that the firm wants to charge the highest price that they can get away with, as all businesses will, right? Businesses are trying to make money. So they'll charge the highest price that people will pay for that quantity. Right? So we have a curve that links up the price that people will pay for given quantities. That's the demand curve. So the second step in our process to figure out the price that the monopolist will charge, you move straight up above this quantity, right up to the demand curve. So just go straight up to here. And the price that goes with that spot on your demand curve, let's call that P, I don't know, P1. That will represent the price that this firm is going to charge. All right, so first find the profit maximizing quantity and then go straight up to the demand curve. So we've got now our price and quantity. That's all we need on the revenue side of things. The last step in our process is to find the cost for this firm. So we know this is the amount of the good that they're going to produce, Q star. The question would be how much is it going to cost this firm to make that many units? Well, we've got another curve that's going to be useful for us, and that's the average total cost curve. Average total cost, or ATC, shows you how much it costs this firm to make each and every unit on average. It's a per unit cost. So if you're making this many units, read up to the height of that average total cost curve, that'll give you your per unit cost. Okay, so there's a good dashed line right there. Let's call that ATC1. So now we're almost done, right? We have almost all the elements that we need. We have all the elements that we need for identifying profit. Profit for a firm is total revenue minus total cost, right? The difference between money that the firm collects versus costs that they have to pay. And we can express total revenue and total cost using variables that we've got right here. So the total revenue, that's going to be equal to price times quantity. Right? What you're selling each unit for times the number of units that you produce. And what do you know? We have price and quantity. So total revenue would be this whole rectangle right here. You would shave that in. Total cost. You can write that as quantity times average total cost. Multiplying the number of units that the firm sells by what it costs them to make each and every one. That'll give you the overall cost. And once again, we have quantity and we have average total cost. You're going to multiply those two together, quantity and ATC. This lower rectangle down here would represent your total cost. 
So to find the profit, you would want to take the big rectangle, which is including everything that we're covering up here with my hands, and then subtract from it the smaller rectangle underneath. That's the total cost. The difference between the two is your profit. And the difference can be shaded in as this little box right there. And let's label that profit, just like that. And so, of course, you want to be able to find that little profit area, both with the graph like this, where it's just price and ATC and general labels like that. And then also, if you're given an example where you have numbers, right, you could just plug in a number to correspond with price and average total cost and quantity and get profit in that way. Right? So to summarize, our steps are first, find the profit maximizing quantity, marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Second, find the price that the firm is going to charge by reading up to the firm's demand curve. Third, you want to find the firm's total cost by reading up to the firm's average total cost. And once you have those elements, get profit is a step. There you go.